All right, one of the other games we played at our last LAN party was a game of StarCraft Remastered, a comp stomp. Uh, there were a couple players that hadn't played in a number of years, and so it was uh, uh, two players that had experience playing and two that really hadn't played for a long time. And so we just did a four-on-three. And we all played as Terran. I guess Terran is the easiest to understand for all of the, the new folks, and I, I've just been a fan of Terran in general. All right, top left we have Steven. Uh, he hadn't played StarCraft for a number of years, so I was giving him a little bit of uh, advice. He was sitting next to me. And so it's kind of giving us some advice of what he uh, needed to do in the first part of the, the level. On the top right, we have Jason, who happened to be in the bottom left corner of the map. Uh, by himself, we're playing on big game hunters, and so there's fairo, fairly narrow entrances, but he was a little concerned that he might be the one attacked first by the computers. Um, bottom left is myself, playing as the yellow. Um, I was in the top middle. I shared an entrance with Steven, so uh, that later came in a little bit handy. And then on the... Uh, bottom right, we have Eric. He, again, was off by himself, but he felt a little fairly confident that he could uh, take on anybody that was attacking him. He has a fairly narrow entrance you know, on, on Big Game Hunters. He spent a little bit of time right here at the beginning trying to find his entrance, a little bit lost as to where exactly he was, um, and uh, eventually he realizes that his entrance is on the top part of his base. All right, you can see um, I started to build a supply depot uh, right off the bat there, but some of the other players spent a little bit more time exploring, trying to find the entrance to their base rather than um, <laughs> building and keeping their uh, workers going. Um, uh, on the top left, Steven, I was just talking to him in the game, saying, hey, first thing you want to build is a supply depot. Uh, you know, he built this uh, refinery, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, at this point, there's four on three, so we're not in that, we're not desperate right now. Um, Jason, go ahead, and he's starting to get his, his supply depot down, and he chose to do the supply depot after the refinery, um, which kind of delayed his barracks a little bit and hit his unit or his SCV production. But again, you know, we we were okay for most of this. Eric's going ahead and found the entrance to his base and is now blocking it off a little bit, uh, rather than building the C defense of what we call it, where you just use the, a wall of buildings around your command center. A little bit different take on what he normally does, but it should work with this narrow opening. Um, bottom left, I'm already starting to get my barracks going, get some workers going into the gas. Uh, with My plan was to go for uh, getting some vultures out and putting some uh, spider mines up to defend my, my entrance as well as Steven's entrance because we shared a common uh, path to our, our bases. Okay, um, Eric's looks like uh, he was getting ready to build himself a... Bunker, yep, there goes his bunker. He's got his barracks complete now. And Steven is working on his, uh, looks like his engineering bay, and I think he had a, a bunker going up as well. Uh, I am noticing that there's only one worker going to um, both Steven and Jason's gas, which might contribute to a late game amount of gas, but we'll see if that ends up slowing him down. Uh, Steven is starting to build his barracks. You can see the top left, um, trying to start to get himself some units to help defend. Uh, and Jason and Eric on the bottom right has got his barracks uh, up and running. He's got his second supply depot to block the entrance to his base. And he's got a Marine pumping out of his barracks. Going to build his defenses there. So it doesn't look like the Zerg is doing a rush. I'm trying to remember on this map, I know there was at least one Terran. I think there was a Zerg player and... Protoss players. I don't know, maybe, maybe there was two Zerg. Well, we'll see here in a second as we get a little bit further along. Uh, Eric chose to build his second bunker a little bit further back from his wall. I'm not quite sure what that was for. Maybe he's going to put a siege tank in front of that. Um, you can see on my screen, I'm getting my uh, my factory up and running, getting my add-on. Um, then I was going to go for uh, upgrading my Marines to do a sea defense. Uh, I don't necessarily need to have the sea defense when I've got the uh, bunkers set up, or the, the, the vultures ready to put some spider mines. Those are do a pretty good job of deterring the computer from doing an early rush and allows me to tech up some. Okay, Jason um, is getting ready to defend himself a little bit there. It looks like it is a choke point. He's got himself a missile turret for detecting cloaking. He's a little bit scattered on where his bunker and his, and his buildings got put. Um, looks like he just used a little bit of uh, 
advice and kind of where to place some of those at. And then he'd be able to do pretty good there. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. It looks like I got my bunker set up. Two bunkers set up. I don't have many guys in them yet. Um, but, you know, one guy in a bunker is pretty powerful. Uh, just because it's taking a guy that only does five damage and, you know, giving him an extra 350 life, which is pretty good for a basic unit. So oftentimes, if you're just trying to scare an enemy player that's attacking, you have two bunkers, and even if you only have one guy in it, it makes them think that you have eight guys. But the computer player doesn't necessarily, uh, <laughs> won't scare them, but it does give you an opportunity to um, repair one or the other as you're getting attacked. Uh, for some reason, I decided to go for a double factory. Usually I don't go for that, but um, I figured maybe I'll go tanks on this map. Um, and here I'm starting to put down some spider mines, kind of choke, block the choke points for Steven and myself. Right there, you can see both of our bases go into that single spot. All right. A little bit longer here, and we will be seeing some aggression by one of the computer players against Jason. Just a little bit of foreshadowing here. <clears throat> he was right in that he would be one of the first people attacked. But I think he managed to do pretty good. And defending. You know, at this point, I, I had my my spider mines going, and I figured, okay, well, a couple spider mines here uh, blocking each of the entrances. I should be fine to do a bit of uh, expansion, going for a uh, command center, second command center for just right outside of Steven Space. Did a little scouting, saw the computer wasn't there, and this is about when, yep, there goes the attack on Jason. I had a couple. Uh, Vultures there, ready to go and help with the fight there. Uh, hopefully that we were going to get there in time. They were doing quite a bit of damage. And it looks like Eric sent down one Marine to try and distract the enemy just a little bit. I only had two Vultures, but I thought maybe a couple Spider Mines, I could lure the computer back into the Spider Mines and we could do some damage. But luckily for Jason, he had a second base, or second bunker slightly back from the entrance to his base. And he was able to repair that one while uh, I took out some of the units from the backside and we were to pinch the pro, uh, the Terran player pretty good right there in the middle. And then I just go ahead and put a couple down, a couple of spider mines down to kind of give them a little bit of extra reinforcements and managed to pick off a marine there and kind of trap a couple of their, their units inside their base unless they want to go through the spider mines. Okay. So I did doing all that cost me a little bit of time. You can see that my minerals are pretty high and I wasn't buying uh, as much stuff as I should have during that time I was trying to do a little bit of micromanaging and that did set, my, set me back a little bit there. But it looks like Eric was able to, in the meantime, get himself a siege tank and I imagine he's got siege mode uh, either done now or will be getting it soon. I do have my second base up and running. Steven's starting to get himself a couple fire bats going. I think there was a little confusion there as I was trying to uh, tell me uh, what kind of unit to get, oh, and he ended up getting some fire bats. Uh, looks like the Zerg is starting to move out and coming towards me and Steven, coming out of their the entrance to their base, which they look, they look like they're in the top right corner of the map. Yep, you can see the attack there coming at my, my spider mines. But I did notice the computer is less likely to commit to an attack if the there are spider mines and that they don't know where they are. Granted, they do have overlords, but they are generally fairly slow at the beginning and not necessarily a threat to the spider mine. This is where I transition to building uh, battle cruisers instead of the tanks like I had planned initially to do. And, you know, it was a little bit of a mistake there to go early uh, double factories when I ended up going siege tanks, or going uh, battle cruisers, sorry. <laughs> I have to refer to the battle cruiser as the siege tank of the air in StarCraft 1, at least. In StarCraft 2, they're just a joke. <laughs> And this probably was a little bit too defensive here, going and putting a, a couple siege tanks down, a couple bunkers. Probably it wasn't necessary, but you know, we did want to give the newer players a chance to build up and and join the the fight.
Looks like uh, Jason in the top right is starting to run out of space in his base as he scattered a lot of his buildings out. And he's starting to figure out, uh, I don't have a lot of space to build, so it looks like he's moving a few things around there. Steven's got himself a handful of fire bats and starting to build a couple of marines. Um, Zurich started to move out. Looks like they're trying to go out and get some more territory. Um, yep, you can see him. I draw, was able to draw one of them up here. And this is where I kind of ran into some problems with the spider mines, is that if I put the spider mines too close to my base, as a unit runs by, it'll blow up my guy as well as um, blow up on my own buildings when, they, when the enemy comes close. You'll see a case where that starts to happen here as the hydralists come a little closer. You can, yeah, they just led my spider mines closer and closer to my own base rather than detonating, and it eventually got a little bit too close for comfort. At this point, Eric's got a pretty sizable tank army, uh, more than he needs to just defend himself. So I think at this point he decides that moving out is going to be the better option to take the center of the map. Because on big game hunters, whoever has the center of the map has a huge advantage because they can control all the paths to each other. However, at the same time, it's an advantage and a disadvantage because every player attacks whoever owns the middle just to get to attack the other players. Uh, this uh, You can see that the Terrans are starting to attack uh, Eric at the entrance to his base, but he's got, what is it, seven siege tanks deployed and two bunkers, and the computers, players are coming in, the units are coming in very slowly, and are just easy pickings for all those siege tanks spread out there. This is about where you can see on my screen in the bottom left, I notice I'm pretty close to the, the, pro, the Zerg, and the Zerg has a mineral line that's really easy to raid at this point, so I just pack uh, I moved a siege tank over there and just started shelling the workers on the other side of the river. Oh. Just coming to do a little bit more spider mines. A couple of enemies came out and there I blew up. There my spider mine finally came and got my <laughs> my vultures and killed a few of my guys. But because of the narrow choke point, my siege, few siege tanks there were able to kill a whole bunch of the enemies without taking too much damage themselves. Uh, this is where Eric starts to move out into the middle and the Zerg player Oh, I hadn't noticed that was when we actually played the game, is that I thought the Zerg player was uh, hadn't gotten past me. I, I saw the, some units go by, by, but I didn't actually see um, that they'd gone to try and expand, which is probably why when they were fighting Eric, why I didn't get as much uh, resistance when I was killing the their mineral line, because they were trying to defend against Eric rather than defend against my uh, units there across the river. So easy pickings here for Eric to be able to take off that center part where the computer got a little bit greedy and overextended itself, thinking it could take the center of the map with all of us just right there. We've got some nice positioning there of his siege tanks, being able to take out some of the Zerg units as well as the Terran units as they come around the corner. Uh, having one tank up front um, means that it doesn't get uh, zero ranged by the Zerglings because there's enough tanks behind it that can uh, help shell. And it spreads out the fire so that not all of the units hit with the first unit that's running towards it. Um, the, 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 the second line is a little closer. If they come directly from the west of the map towards his, his siege tanks, they could technically have all three or four of those tanks fire at the same unit. But because the units are coming from the top and the bottom, it does do a better job of scattering his uh, the targeting to additional units as they come around the corner from the top and the bottom. So this is, yeah, this is, now now that I'm watching this, and this is a big reason why I didn't get attacked as much by the Zerg that I was attacking. Okay. And it looks like, yeah, there's a, a one Zerg and two Terran, we've noticed so far, that, that covers the three computer players that we were fighting. Um, but we had pretty good map control. You know, I noticed that on the, the far left of the map, there, the computer hadn't, there was no computer there for the, the eighth player. And so as long as we were able to keep the computer out of uh, taking control of the middle and that other side, we were doing pretty good. Uh, so that's what I was thinking at this point was, you know, they I don't think they would have gone out and expanded to that, that extra spot. Considering I had been shelling them and uh, I hadn't noticed that the fight going on in the middle of the map. Eventually, we'll see what happens, but I, I do... Uh, come to realize that I wasn't quite right <laughs> in my assumptions about the map.
at this point, since I'd already, you can see in the bottom left, I pulled over my battle cruiser and I didn't get much resistance. And I was like, mm, I don't think the uh, Zerg player is doing so well. They probably ran out of money. They didn't send many hydralists down to shoot at my battle cruiser. So I was like, well, I should be able to waltz right in here. And sure enough, they didn't have much in the way of air defense. There was a hydralist den. If I could kill that, they wouldn't be able to mount any type of de uh, defensive action against the air units. And so I started. Uh, it was like I'll just get these four other or three other battle cruisers that are coming this way and and go to to fight off the Zerg player and they should be easy pickings. In the middle, uh, Eric was able to kill off that expansion of the Zerg player, which really hurt their economy in combination with my shelling of their mineral line. Uh, and unbeknownst to us, there was one more expansion that you will see uh, off to the left. That's the one that I didn't assume I assumed the computer wouldn't go for. But it did, as a greedy Zerg computer player, <laughs> trying to get all the expansions. But here you can see there's a, there's a good lineup here for the, the purple tanks there in the bottom right. The uh, the Terran units were coming single file around the corner. And, and that might just be a, a problem with this map of, of the computer AI, uh, because there's so many curves and turns and all of the different paths through the rivers that the computer player isn't smart enough to combine all their units into one. Uh, this did cause some, some heartburn a little bit here for uh, Eric. You can see he got uh, some ghosts coming in and, and freezing his tanks. Uh, I don't know if at this point he had a, a medic around. That might have been a medic right there next to the uh, that, that uh, last tank. But it looks like he's got some invisible wraiths shooting on him, but he's got, luckily, he's, his comp scan set up and going. That was something that uh, I remember one game playing with Eric. He... Uh, was getting attacked by an invisible unit, and he said, I need somebody that can with detection. And I'm like, you're a Terran. You should have the detection. He's like, oh, right. <laughs> when you call out to your allies and you are the Terran on the team and you ask for uh, detection, that means you probably didn't get yourself a comm scan station. So I'm glad to see that he, I guess that was a few years ago, but he took that to heart and he always gets himself a comm scan station. <laughs> gets it ready. So yeah, at this point, the, the Zerg player isn't putting up much resistance. I was able to waltz in and just kind of go over and mow down pretty much everything that was there. Uh, you can see when I sent my SCV over to that far left base, I went. I didn't expect the Zerg player to be over there. And when I marched in, there was a Zergling there killing my little SCV. So I bought the SCV back, killed the Zergling. And this was kind of frustrating And then I went to kill this base and the creep took forever had already expanded quite a bit so it really kept me from being able to build an expansion here granted i probably could have gone someplace else but uh between here and the base that was near me all three of the bases near me had had a zerg player in it and were taking all of the available building ground and covered it with creep kind of frustrating but we was able to i didn't really need the money i just wanted to have an extra set of income to be able to start pumping out the units in case things got a little dicey. Probably overkill, but, you know, that's just me. I like to do lots of bases, whether it's necessary or not. It's probably a bad habit I've had from years and years of playing StarCraft when I was younger. The way I would win wasn't because I was really better at the game. Well, it was just because I would build more bases than everybody else and I'd have a better economy. You can see in uh, Jason's base, he's starting to get to the point where you know he's holding off a lot of uh, fighting here with his his siege tank and bunker there. Uh, I think at the end of the game, he gets a pretty decent score for a number of kills just because the computer kept attacking him over and over and over again with simple marines or easy to kill units. Right? You can see he's starting to run out of money there. He's got a lot of money in his in his bank, but he still um, could use the second base that he's popping down right now. So. Good thing he's doing that. Uh, looks like Eric managed to do pretty good here and uh, capture in the center. And at this point, there's just two computers left, the two Terrans in the bottom. And the, you know, at this point, they're pretty much bankrupt. And if they had been human players, they might have considered surrendering because there wasn't much that they were going to be able to do uh, because they got land trapped. They only have about a third of the map left. And by now, their initial min minerals will be gone. And if they hadn't expanded, they were toast. 
So at this point, uh, Eric and I were talking, saying, hey, let's go and attack the computers. And he's like, I'm going to attack straight down. And he's like, well, I can't attack straight down. I'm going to attack to the left. And the reason being because of the path curves into where Jason's base is and then loops around to go south. Uh, I had already decided to go south, so here's all my battle cruisers going. And here, here I am on the bottom left. You can see I'm still waiting for that creep to disappear so I can drop my my command center down. And this command center also got built in a funny spot because of the creep being in the way. So at this point, it was just basically clean up, going through and wiping out the computer players, uh, little expansions. And uh, Jason brings a, a few Marines. I bring them down my my battle cruisers. Eight battle cruisers were planning because there wasn't much resistance. And then the siege tanks that Eric had just, you know, bunny hopped them down the way. It's funny, he got himself stuck a couple times on his Goliath. He brought his siege tanks down, but. Getting himself set up, not taking too many losses. And I finally get my command center to land after probably building that like four or five minutes ago. Not that I, like again, like not like that I really needed it. You can see that I'm pretty high in minerals. I was a little bit low on gas as I was pumping out a lot of battle cruisers, and uh, the mineral, the gas that I was at was starting to run out. So I did a little bit of longer distance gas mining. But again, I don't really need much more. I just like to. Have a lot in the bank. <laughs> you can see Eric, or Steven in the top left has been mostly left alone the whole game. I don't think he ever got attacked. He was just, you know, learning to play the game again since it's been a number of years since he had played. All right, and it's just a matter of time before Eric moves down into the bottom left and Siege tanks his way through the, the enemies there. Doing the bunny hop of the Siege tanks. Or frog leap, if you want to call it that. <laughs> frog leap is probably better. Yep, between Jason's army and my army here in the middle, you can see the top top left, him and I attacking, finishing off. I think that's the black player, and then the computer in the bottom right, not doing so good either. And we just go to the end to finish it off. Yep, we can see that computer's pretty much gone. We just gotta swing right and finish off the last of the other one. Oh, there it goes. There's the computer dead announcement. And now we have the mad rush at the end of the game where there's just points to be had if you can kill off all the buildings as fast as you can. It's kind of a little bit of a small, not really rivalry, but just a, a uh, I want as many points as possible. You know, with human players, they just surrender and you don't get to finish off all the bases. But it is nice to be able to get a few extra points and kind of increase your score just a little bit. Not that it matters. <laughs> and I think that is it. There's the end of the game. So, it's, uh, you know, obviously slated towards the team with four players, but, you know, we did have a couple of new folks, so we wanted to give them a chance to play the game and remember how to play. And you can see there, there's the score. We got uh, Yellow in first, and is that Dalinar in second? And a number of the kills, or a number of the scores there, and then Drasno 33 in green. And then Steve in fourth, and then and, and, and the computer player. So thanks for watching. We had a great time playing the game, and thanks for making it all the way to the end. And we'll go ahead and end it there.